What's up, beautiful? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kat. This is my channel, and this is another weekend in my life. Okay, so I've been gone for a minute. Um, I had a family member that had a very serious cancer scare and um, was not in a place to be filming. Everything is fine. Um, the mask that they found in this family member was benign. So we're all good. Um, but we had a very scary time. Um, so I just haven't been filming. It was really upsetting. So moving on, um, it is Easter weekend. I thought it would be fun. Regardless, I want to film family, like firsts and, and family events for Buddy so that he has all of these like home movies and stuff. So there's, I'm going to be filming a lot of Easter tomorrow. I'm going to show you the clips that of course don't include his face, but, uh, I thought I would pull the camera out and just kind of walk you through what today and tomorrow are going to look like. Um, I was going to do my three day weekend vlog, but we didn't end up doing anything yesterday. Brett ended up working his regular shift. And so I was alone most of the day with Bo and it was, you know, first half of the day was great. Second half of the day was not so great. We were unhappy. Uh, we are currently alone, the two of us, and we're by ourselves because Brett is helping his sister move uh, apartments today. Currently he's on the floor in front of the TV. <laughs> there are the dancing fruits playing and he has a spatula, so he is happy. <laughs> um, I thought I would give you a book update because that's kind of like all I did yesterday was take care of Buddy and read. I do have the washing machine going if you can hear that. Um, and then I got a couple of like Taylor Swift coded things that I thought might be fun to share. I've been like trying to support smaller businesses. I think a lot of people started supporting smaller businesses in, during the pandemic. Like we realized how important it was um, to help these businesses survive that event. Um, but now it's really like reframe my brain because I, I want to support those people instead of the companies that are raising their prices to insane amounts. And I don't want to get into the inflation versus corporate greed, but I'm a corporate greed girly and I'm, I, I, that is a hill I will die on is that these corporations are just taking advantage of us. So I would much rather support small businesses. So off of my soapbox, um, I got a couple of tapestry blankets from a really cool Swifty. I believe her company's called Peppermint Place. Is it Peppermint Place? I already got rid of the packaging, but it was so cute. She wrapped each of them in like a little, little tissue paper and then each blanket came in a bow of a, of a different color. And I'm saving this ribbon to put in my hair, okay? We've also got our slick back style because we have Brett's birthday dinner tonight, which I will take you to. Um, I don't know if you're gonna be able to, you can't really see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it. So this is the holiday house. So she did watercolor paintings and then calligraphy on the bottom. They're like those cotton tapestry blankets. You're not gonna be able to see this. Um, I'll insert clips, but, or photos. So there's two blankets and the castle blanket and the holiday house blanket. And she had a bunch of people message her and say like, if you have, imperfect product like just sell it at a discounted rate and people will buy it so these blankets are 130 dollars a piece which like she's the artist she sets the price you know what you spent your time on you know what your materials cost like i firmly believe artists should always spend or charge what they think they should but who am i to tell you how much work it took to make that painting you know what i mean but like 130 dollars for one of these and I'm, i've been looking at them for maybe six months and then she's like, I'm gonna have an imperfect sale and they'll be heavily discounted. And I get on the website, they are half off. And there was a bundle of the two blankets for 130. I'm like, okay, sold. So I bought them both. <laughs> um, they're really nice quality. I don't know if they're still gonna be available by the time I post this, uh, the imperfect ones. Let's see, the only spot on this one is like, there's one little pull and there's like a little dot right here next to the house. But to me, it just looks like a bird. Like that's just a bird as far as I'm concerned and I don't care. So, <laughs> um, and then the other blanket is like more of a Mediterranean beachy castle vibe. I, I really like them both, but this castle is like, and with the water, oh, this is it. I love this one. I got those in the mail yesterday. Already been snuggling and reading with them. 
As far as books, I have a mini book haul to share, but first I want to tell you about the book I am reading. I'm reading The Crimson Moth. Um, this is the Fairy Loot edition. God, is this Fairy Loot or is it a Lumicrate? Forgive me. I can never keep them straight. This is Fairy Loot. I finally figured out what book subscriptions I have. I have three Fairy Loot subscriptions and one Illumicrate subscription. I don't know if you can hear that little clapping noise. It's him clapping his feet. <laughs> um, but you might not have heard of this, but you might have heard of The Heartless Hunter. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, that's what it's called. They're the same book. This author published the same book under two title names. So in the UK, it's The Crimson Moth, and in the US, it's The Heartless Hunter. I'm gonna pop up a photo of it. You've probably seen it floating around Book Talk or Bookstagram or whatever. Um, I am halfway, I got halfway last night. It took me a minute to get into it. Like the first 100 pages, I was like, I don't know. I've been in a slump though, so take it for what it's worth, so. In an effort to get myself out of a slump. Ooh, good Lord. We did a small amount of damage, about $120 worth of damage because I have coupons and gift cards and things. Um, at Barnes the other day, I just was like having a rough day and I was like, you know what, fine. I haven't bought books in a while, other than my subscriptions. So I went ahead and snagged books three through four of the Off Campus series by L. Kennedy. This is a reprint with new covers and the first editions of all of the new cartoon covers have sprayed edges. So I had, yep. Uh-huh. I had the <laughs> I had the first two books with the sprayed edges. Um I read them on Kindle. Well, I read the first two books on Kindle and then um I wanted to get the rest of them. So when I picked up the hard copies, I was like, "Oh, I'll just get whatever they have at the store." And then they had the blue ones and so then I had to go back and get the other ones. These are all young. What is it? New adult? It's like, I mean, it's college. College age hockey romance. These are really good. They are spicy if you're into that. I would say like Maybe a medium spicy. One of my favorite authors is Catherine Center. I really loved her last two releases. Of course, I can't. I was trying to think of the. My favorite one is her most recent release. And now I can't even remember the name of it. But the other one that got me into Catherine Center was The Bodyguard, where the woman is the bodyguard. But the other book was really good. Um, it's about a woman who gets face blindness, so like she can't recognize people's faces. Hello Stranger. It was so good. And like the plot twist at the end, everybody was like, I saw that plot twist coming a mile away. Okay, I, I was exhausted and pregnant, okay? I did not see it coming. I just did not see it coming. So, um, <laughs> it was really good. And then I finished, um, another of her books yesterday, Things You Save in a Fire. It's about a female firefighter. And that was really, really good. So I bought How to Walk Away, which is from her backlist. And then um, Happiness is for Beginners. This is getting turned into a Netflix movie. Um, unfortunately, they put a, a, a printed sticker, you know what I mean, on the I hate when they do that. I don't know what either of these are about, like to be totally honest. I have no, I got nothing. Her next, her, her new release that's coming, I think in August, June, August is The rom commerce and I think it's about two screenwriters that write rom-coms, if I remember correctly. I think that's what it is. So Happiness is for Beginners. Oh man, I got a bad copy. I didn't even notice that. Look at that. Eh, whatever. I'm gonna listen to the audiobook anyway. These are kind of like, they're in the fiction section, so I would say they're more like chiclet. Okay, so this one is about Margaret, and she's about to start her dream job, and then an accident happens, and she's forced to confront all of the people in her life that are not treating her well, apparently. I don't... I, there's always, like, an, a moral to the story. There's always, uh, usually, a subplot of romance in her books. Okay, this one's about Helen, and she's newly divorced at 32, and that sounds insane because I'm turning 32 in, like, a month and a half. Um, and to make her feel better, her brother convinces her to go on a wilderness survival course. And craziness ensues, is, is what it sounds like. Ooh. A bean pack of sorority girls. Okay. We all know I had a terrible sorority experience. If you missed that video, that's a doozy. Really held nothing back on that one. Um, so then we have 
two others. This one is done and dusted. Also don't know what this one's about. I've just like, I've, I've seen it floating around and all I know is cowboy romance. She's off limits, but he's never been good at following the rules. That's good enough for me. Sign my butt up. Um, and then this is a new one, Rebecca Searle. I think is how you pronounce her name, but she wrote One Italian Summer, which I read. I actually listened to it as we were driving to Hilton Head one year, but it's like this woman and her mother are very close and they have a trip where they're ready to go to Italy and her mom passes away before she can make it on the trip. So she decides to go on the trip without her. And when she gets there, she somehow, she like time travels, but doesn't time travel. The time travel is never explained, okay? I'll just tell you that little spoiler right there. It's never explained. Um, the point is she gets to meet her mother when she was her age. So her mom, like in her thirties, and she gets to spend the summer with her mom. I wish that they had explained the time travel because it doesn't make sense. But it was, it was really good. It was very atmospheric. Um, the writing was really beautiful. So this is her new release. This just came out last Tuesday um, called Expiration Dates. I don't remember what it's about. Being single is like playing the lottery. There's always the chance that with one piece of paper, you could win it all. No clue, but it's got cool end papers. I don't know what these mean. I'm like the worst book reviewer of all time, but you know, it's fine. Luckily the sticker on here will get peeled off. So that's where we're at. Um, it is nine, 9.24. Yeah, it's 9.24 little friend. And we are gonna hang out. He already had some breakfast. I'm gonna drink my coffee. He's gonna watch his fruits. I don't know, we'll probably play or do something or maybe he'll play by himself and let me read. I don't know, maybe he'll just be chill this morning until Brett gets back, but. Regardless, we have a, a fancy fish dinner to go to tonight and then we have Easter tomorrow and um, I have all of the things to help the Easter bunny leave his gifts. I don't know, it's like a, it's a crapshoot, right? Like, so this is Brett's family dinner for him for his birthday, because his birthday was a couple weeks ago, but I never know what to wear because like, it's a nice restaurant, so then I dress up, but like his sisters never dress up, so then I look overdressed, but I'd rather be overdressed at this point in my life. So, um, and I have my Easter dress picked out, so you'll see that tomorrow. I bought that from Abercrombie. Um, but I, I am excited to go through my closet upstairs and look at what dresses I have, which is why we're doing our oiling treatments. We have fresh hair tonight and for Easter tomorrow. Okay, so I pulled four options. Someone got really upset. Yeah. Someone got upset that I went upstairs. He was fully contained in his bouncer. He was okay. Nothing wrong with him. He just did not like that I walked away. <laughs> so, did you not like that? No? You'd be with mama all the time? Yeah. Someday you'll want me to go away. <laughs> that day is not today. Okay, so I'm gonna try these four dresses on for you. Okay, so this is the first one. Two are, or three are Lily Pulitzer and one is Farm Rio. I knew this would fit because <laughs> I wore it when I was like six, seven months pregnant. I don't know. I didn't really start showing till I was seven months, but there's still like a lot of leeway. This is comfortable. I would wear it with a little jacket, like a little denim jacket. Option number two. This is also Lily Pulitzer. I was worried this wouldn't fit and it is a tiny bit tight. It's a 12. I think if it was a 14, I'd be a little bit more comfortable, but like it's really not that bad. Same dress, different print. This one fits better? Like, no clue. I'm actually like not hating a little bun. I feel like this maybe reads more like spring and Easter. I don't know. I wanna try on the Farm Rio. I think that's the direction I'm gonna go. All right, this is disappointing for me. Um, this doesn't work. And like the way I'm standing, Right, it looks like it works. The problem is I'm not, we've got a little bit of an apron belly that we're working with now and I don't think I've ever been able to wear this dress. I bought it for my baby shower and then was too pregnant to wear it at the baby shower. Um, 
So I have not, I don't think I've actually even gotten to wear this dress. Okay, so this is from Abercrombie, but he just went down for his nap and I don't know if he's gonna squawk, but he's not particularly thrilled right now. Um, I think this is what I'm gonna go with today. This is actually an extra large and it's maybe a little bit big actually. Um, I could probably use the large. A little disappointed that some of my other pieces didn't fit. I tried on a couple others off camera. One did work, um, but maybe not today's vibe. The back of this is really pretty actually, like a open back. I think I have the right bra for this, but um, I am gonna wear a jacket with it. I just don't love how my arms look. Hi Noodle. I did have like some postpartum questions that people had asked me, so I was thinking about filming a sit down video about um, like postpartum and VSG and like how I'm feeling about all that kind of stuff. I might do that once like my hair and makeup are done and I look like a person again because like I am not wearing a stitch of makeup right now, which like I am proud of how my skin looks. I have tried really hard to get my skin to look good and I don't even think I have really have terrible bags under my eyes, which is wonderful. So basically, now that he's passed out, what I'm gonna do is, uh, and I figured out my outfit. This is also like a really interesting material. I don't think I caught it very well, but it's like, kind of like a crimped, I don't know if it's linen. It is lined, which is nice. It's got just a little, hi noodle. Can you say hi to the people? Thank you. Um, now that he's out though, I'm gonna switch back in my t-shirt and shorts, and I think I'm gonna try to read a little bit um of this so tomorrow's the last day of the month i really want to see if i can finish this i've got 200 pages left i read 100 last night so in theory i should be able if i read 100 today and 100 tomorrow so i'm gonna get changed and do some reading and then check back in later Okay, so here's how the outfit turned out. This is my mom's vintage denim jacket. I've worn it a thousand times on this channel. Um, the Abercrombie dress. And then these are Dolce Vita. I'm not sure I love these. I'm not sure they fit very well, um, but I got them on thread up. And then I'm carrying my little Stodd moon bag. My dad picked this up for me in Paris, which sounds fancier than it is. He's been to Paris a whole one time and he surprised me with a handbag. So. This is the outfit. Here we go. Going to dinner. My hair did not turn out exactly the way I had hoped. I think I'll tweak it tomorrow for Easter. I don't know. I don't know. I need lashes is I think the biggest problem is that I did not have time to put lashes on and that's what I need. So I'm gonna go. I'm already wasting time filming this clip. All right, we are home. I am in my PJs. These are the Durf Avenue Summer Fruit PJs, I believe. They just released two more colors of these pajamas. They released an all blue and a another white with a print on it that's blue bubbles, like soap bubbles and blue bows. So I had to buy them immediately. Um, they should be here later this week. I'm very excited. But we had a good dinner and that's kind of it. My mom ended up coming over this afternoon, so that's why I didn't end up filming because she was over here. But we really just like hung out with Buddy and she watched him while I got ready and the curls are hanging on. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to redo them a little bit in the morning. Um, we have Easter lunch at one o'clock and 
If I am proactive enough, I will show you what is in Bo's Easter basket. But it is 8.36. I'm going to open these windows for a little while and keep reading my book. I got like 30 pages into the 100 I wanted to read today, so I do still think it's possible to finish this book tomorrow. I will catch you tomorrow for Easter and another cute blue and white outfit. I hope my Easter dress still looks as good as it did when I bought it. Was it like a month or two ago? We'll see, but I'll catch you in the morning. So here's how the outfit turned out. I ended up doing a little white bow from Amazon. And then my dress is from Abercrombie and I went with, these were like bridesmaid shoes for my wedding that a uh, bridesmaid ended up doing, didn't, she ended up not being a bridesmaid. So um, we have the same shoe size, so these are mine. Now I wanted to wear my wedding shoes, but it might rain. So we're gonna not do that. I can't tell if my bow is centered in the back, so I might have to have my mom fix it, but. Brett had to go do something at the police station, so I am by myself. Buddy is unhappy. He fought me getting into his outfit. <laughs> so I'm gonna pack him up and go because I think I'm actually late. But you know, everybody kind of expects you to be late when you have a baby. There he goes, that's my cue. Catch you at Easter. Let's see, what do we got? These are for dad. There's a, there's a book you can put in your mouth. He has that book, but he has a different, I bought him a different version. Or no, that's, is that, I love guess you. how much I love Okay, because I've got, I got him Peter Rabbit. Wow, look at that, Avery. Wow. Oh, look at this one, Mom. I put this stuff on Amazon. That's what I'm oh, so so cute. You put the, he puts the carrots in. Oh, she sends, she sends it to me. It's easier. She just sends me the link. The Amazon link. And yeah, she does make that stuff for me. Too. This one was supposedly pretty popular. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I kind of was scared. I used to do back 
Buddy is fighting his nap. So, um, I'm to show you some cute things that he got in his Easter basket. We got a crunchy blankie, or crunchy, not blanket, crunchy book. That's fun. We got more books. I always request more books. Another crunchy book. We love crunchy books. We got some fun bath toys. We have a Peter Rabbit tissue box where you can just pull the tissues all the time over and over again. Uh, we got a little food bowl with a lid. And we've got this like jellyfish pull string toy. And then these are like some silicone stacker toys. So there's a couple other things here and there, but um, that's the, the gist of what he got. And then the adults got cash and candy. Grandma always puts $50 worth of cash um, into eggs for the adult kids. So um, we're going to promptly turn that around and use it to buy formula. So at least my $50. I don't know what Brett's doing with his. But we're hoping he's going to pass out. I'm going to get out of this. I don't know if I'm going to take the makeup off. I'm going to take the lashes off. Uh, but I have 70 pages left in Crimson Moth, and I am determined to finish it. So I hope I'm not, like, too close to the camera. Oh, I might have been way too close. I didn't have the screen open. Oh, the highlighter is popping. I don't remember who makes that palette that I use the highlighter from, but it it's good. It's It's warm outside once it's 75 and it was a little muggy because it had kind of sprinkled earlier so oh, I gave up on the bra strap keeping it down so I'll have to get changed I'm also listening to the third Magnolia Parks book Okay, party people, it is Monday morning at 10 a.m. and I'm just realizing my sound soother is on and you can probably hear the thunderstorm, which is interesting because there's probably gonna be one today, but uh, I thought I would close out this vlog. Yesterday we ended up just laying around. It was really exhausting, um, Easter, and we think Buddy is getting his two front teeth in. Uh, so the teething is bad this week and he was pretty fussy. So we just kind of, hung around. I did finish the Crimson Moth slash the Heartless Hunter. Uh, I gave it, I think, four and a half stars. Like, like I don't remember what I rated something that I finished reading yesterday. Um, some people are saying it's rivaling Akatar. I don't think it's that good. It's also a duology, so Akatar's an unfinished series with currently four books in a novella, so I, I don't know. Akatar is kind of like top of the line for me like Akatar and Throne of Glass are probably my two all-time favorite series so it's hard for me to like it, I can't use a five star as like five star is Akatar level Akatar is a six star to me so <laughs> it can't be on the scale because it would skew the scale does that make sense it would ruin the curve for all involved um but Crimson Moth was really good I read it really quickly for me. Um, easily being able to smash through 100 pages a night is very fast for me. Um, I would also say the copy that I had had very large font, maybe like 14 or 16 point font somewhere in there. Camera died, slight different angle. The point is four and a half stars. I am looking forward to the next book, which I think the author noted was coming February of next year. So excited for that. I felt like I had like a really bad reading month. Like I felt like I was in a total slump. I wasn't like really interested in a whole lot of things. Um, it was hard for me to finish books. And then I looked at how many books I finished in March and it was 15. I mean, some of them were very short, like Kindle Unlimited books um, and quite a few audio books, but like 15 books is a lot in a month. So I don't know, but. Here's an update on what I am currently reading as we go into this week. In March, I finished the second Magnolia Parks book, Daisy Hates. So now we are on to Magnolia Parks The Long Way Home. I also went ahead and grabbed on eBay the last three books, two books, the last two books. I have the first three 
grabbed the last two. I had to get them on eBay because she's already gotten new covers and I want the covers that match the, so I want the originals um, that match the copies that I have. So I have to have those coming. I think they're coming from the UK. So I'll, if I can get the audiobooks fast enough from my library, because I'm listening to this also, then I'm hoping to finish these. Oh, Brett called me. Great. And then I decided to go ahead and pick up A Fate Inked in Blood. This is the Fairy Root edition of A Fate Inked in Blood. Correct. Uh, this is the newest series by... Danielle Jensen. She wrote The Bridge Kingdom, if you're familiar. I have read the first two books of The Bridge Kingdom. The second two books are, it's like the first two books are one couple and the second two books are a different couple. So I just haven't gotten into that. But actually, I don't know if you can, you can't see them. Let me move you. Those colored books, the purple and blue one that that photograph is sitting on, those are the special editions of The Bridge Kingdom. I really liked it. Some people say if you like Akatar, you'll like Bridge Kingdom. I don't think the romance is as good in Bridge Kingdom, uh, but the world building and I, I mean, I smashed through those. I really, really like them. I might mean, like them enough to buy the $50 special editions. So, um, but I'm excited about this one. It's Vikings and magic. And I honestly, I don't really know but people are raving about it and people are raving about Crimson Moth. So I'm going to go with it. Um, I'm part of the subscriptions. I think I already mentioned that. So that's how I get all the special editions of everything. But the sprayed edges are really cool just with runes. And then, which is interesting because <laughs> Crimson Moth's main character's name was Rune. Um, and then here's, I assume, our main female and our main male love interest. So excited to start this i just have the bookmark placed on the first page this is what i'm going to start reading tonight when i get done with work i am currently trying to what we call launch a project um i'm launching a federal grant for a client that opened up here on april 1st not a joke it is gonna be meaty so that is what I have. I hope you guys enjoy this little Easter vlog and leave me a bunny or Easter themed emoji in the comments. If you made it this far, let me know what kind of videos you want to see coming up this spring. I have a vacation in May. I have a vacation in June. Um, so I am going to try to bring you along with me. I know you guys like my vacation vlogs. Uh, one of those is going to be the Florida family vlog that you've seen for years and years. And I am excited because we didn't need to go last year due to the pregnancy. Plus, I, I was not going to, I mean, just generally, I wasn't going to travel pregnant because of my high risk situation, but I was, you know, the, the, I was due in July and the trip's usually in July. So this year it's in June, um, but like first week of May and then first week of June. So we're going to have trips back to back to back. So I'm really excited and I'll catch you in the next one. Love you, Warrior Crew. Bye.